This is one of our darkest days as a city, and I know that we're much better than this. The officers are dealing with some cars that have been lit on fire in the intersection. Bottles are being thrown at them. Uh, there's a liquor store that was just lit on fire across the corner from us. There's a baby coming out from the building next door. They're evacuating people. How are you going to uh, enforce a curfew? Tomorrow? I think we're going to have to go, but thank, thanks for the time. How, can, how are you going to enforce a curfew tomorrow with when kids are out of school? This, this is absolutely disgusting. Stay the hell home. Go! They need to have their butts at home. They need to be in their home. Riots, protests and looting have broken out in Minnesota as Black Lives Matter supporters Protests turned destructive in downtown Seattle tonight. Here's what we know as of 10 o'clock. Protests started at about noon today in Seattle, but turned destructive right around 4 p.m. when someone lit a Seattle police cruiser on fire. Since then, we have seen widespread looting and destruction downtown. Hey guys, and this again, developing situation out here. Talk about a tale of, of two things going on here. We just saw the police take down that guy in the white here that they're moving up. Uh, as I mean, it was dozens of people that were inside that T-Mobile store looting it. And then they, uh, the police were pulling them out of the window bodily. Uh, and they're still running out. You can see this. And police are trying to get the few that are still inside. So that looks like arrest being made for sure. Certainly we have seen some people get away uh, from those before. But looting in the T-Mobile store, we watched as they broke the window. Finally, the police had enough numbers uh, to move up in there and, and take action on that. And they are taking people to the ground, making arrests right now. I want to talk more about the fires. The fire department in Seattle had a hard time getting to vehicles on fire today. Uh, fire Chief Harold Scoggins addressed the media about the difficulties his department is facing tonight. You may have seen us waiting to respond to fight vehicle fires. I want you to know I have a duty to keep our firefighters safe. And we're waiting to extinguish these fires until we can actually do, get in and do the good work. And that's why I think it's important our partnership with SPD and the escorts that they have been providing us throughout the day and throughout the evening. I also want to end with reminding those who are starting fires in the downtown area that they have very many unintended consequences. You may be hurt. Those protesting may be hurt. Those who live, visit, and work here or may be here right now may be hurt. Overnight, more rage and destructions in cities across the West. On Sunday, angry mobs ignoring mandatory curfews. 
violently clashing with police, overturning cars, torching buildings, and looting stores. I can't breathe. In the shadow of Santa Monica's iconic pier and Third Street promenade, the mayhem unfolded for hours as some peacefully protested. Heads up, heads up, heads up. Others provoked a confrontation. We looked inside the windows. You don't see police officers there. So I think what would likely happen here is the, the majority of officers who are at this location have probably left for their own safety. There might be a team that's still left behind. We saw people on the roof earlier. But I think, Don, what we're going to see is they're going to let this building burn. You're not going to see officers coming in. They know that the decision right now is you lose a building or you lose lives, potentially. That's the calculation that they're making so right they're now. So they're not going to try to control this fire? They're just going to let this burn, Josh? Is that is that what you believe the calculation is? That's what, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Don, we've seen no indication that officers or fire department, and I'm scanning the crowd here because there's a lot going on, we've seen no indication that they're trying to either fight the fire or enforce the criminal activity going behind. This is uh, looting. People are crashing through the windows here against, uh, you know, upset the building on fire. I think they're making that calculation that they would rather lose a building than try to incite or inflame the situation even more than it has. What happens after that, we don't know whether they just let the building go and assume the crowd will disperse once they get tired after a number of hours. But so far, we haven't seen police officers staging. There have been no flashing lights. This several block area that Morgan and I are in right now is out of control. It is not in the control of authority. It is not in the control of the police. It's not in the control of, of the government and not the National Guard. So for all those people who are hearing that the National Guard has been activated in Minneapolis and in Minnesota, that is not happening right now. Right now, no government authority, no authority whatsoever has control over this area. The people have control over this area, and this is what's happening right now. Uh, there's a lot of venting going on. There are definitely people who have come up to me. They're not happy about the way this is uh, this is unfolding. Uh, they're not happy about the damage to public property. But, boy, the anger, I, I can't, I mean, your pictures show it, Brian, but the anger is visceral here.